everyone, it's Hannah here and thanks for coming to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to show you guys how I do microneedling at home and that's using the Banisher 2.0. I know I've done maybe two videos about the Banisher so far, but I'm always getting questions on how I actually do it, what my skincare routine looks like when I do microneedling with the Banisher at home. So I wanted to make this video just so you guys can kind of see like a how-to with your Banisher and how or like what to do afterwards. So we're just gonna hop straight into this video, but before we do that, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I do post new videos here every week. Also follow me on Instagram at the Hen Ali because I'm always on Instagram if not here on YouTube. And I do a lot of other content on my Instagram as well, including skincare. So without further ado you guys, let's get straight into how I use the Banisher and my skincare routine afterwards. All right guys, so this is definitely a different angle than my normal, but I just thought instead of doing it sitting at my normal setup, I wanted to do it in the bathroom because this is where I generally do my skincare routine, my microneedling. So I'm sorry if I look down, I'm just trying to make sure you guys see everything in my monitor, everything's in view. So hopefully you guys can see everything. I guess I can kind of like step up if I need to so you guys can see like close-ups, but otherwise, this is how I'm going to show you how I microneedle at home. Okay, so most importantly, here we have the Banisher 2.0. I've already had it sitting in the alcohol. Let me kind of just show you guys in the view. Here we go. This is what the Banisher 2.0 looks like. As you can see, I had it sitting in the alcohol. If you're new to my channel and you actually don't know what the Banisher 2.0 is, it is an at-home microneedling pen or stamp. It's actually a stamp. And it has point... It has 0.5 millimeter needles. This helps produce, helps with collagen production in the skin, with elasticity, and it also helps fade acne scars, as well as stretch marks, and just overall texture of the skin. So I had it sitting in alcohol, just to make sure to sanitize it, and now we can go ahead and take it out. So all you're gonna do is just unscrew it. And there you go. I like to keep the alcohol on the side, just because when you're done using the Banisher 2.0, you're going to want to make sure to sanitize it again before your next use. I don't know if you can see the needles right there. So you can, I mean, you can let it sit and dry or you can just tap off the any excess alcohol there, but you can apply it on the skin, it's not gonna do anything. I already went ahead and made sure to have a bare face. I cleanse my skin of any extra product that I might have. I usually tend to kind of use whatever cleanser I have available to me, and this was on the counter, so I went ahead and just used this today. And that's the Cetaphil the Daily Facial Cleanser. But I really enjoy the CeraVe one. I just don't have it on me, so I'm gonna have to pick that up again. So go ahead and just cleanse. I like to double cleanse. Double cleanse your skin of anything you might have on, like your SPF from the day, any product, or just any dirt, oil on the skin. Make sure you have a clean, bare, face before microneedling and now let me roll up my sleeves i'm just gonna hold my skin back and you're gonna apply pressure very lightly you're not gonna just push it into the skin it's like light pressure so honestly just like this a little tap and you lift and then i like to do it turn it around four times there you go if that makes sense just a close-up so you can see so you're gonna hold the skin, just do a light tap, turn, turn again, turn it one more time. And there you have it. So now we're just gonna do that for the rest of the skin and make sure you don't go over live acne. If you go over live, live acne or just any acne breakout with the microneedling stem, just imagine as if you're poking into the acne and then you're taking it around the rest of your skin, you're spreading that bacteria, you don't want to do that. So if you have any acne, go around it, or maybe just skip microneedling when you have too much and you can't really go around the acne. That's a big no-no. So let's do this. As you can see, I have really, this really big box scar right here that has gotten better over time after doing this. But and I hope you guys can see this. And then this right here is where my pores and my ice pick scars are really at. And microneedling actually helps 
with your pores as well. And I just kind of go over my smile line. And there you go, you have it on that side. As you can see, it's a little red. I don't know if it's picking it up because I do have very bright white lights on top of me, but it is pretty red, the skin, which is normal. It's just reaction. I have, and I also have very reactive skin, but light pressure is key. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to bleed, nothing like that. It is 0.5 millimeters needle, so it's not deep at all compared to if you go in office, but you still don't want to apply it too much pressure. Now I'm just going to continue this on the rest of my face, and yeah. I've also had questions asking whether or not this hurts. For me personally, I have a very high pain tolerance, but in general, this is not painful. At least the stamp is not. It's just a little discomfort. Not even discomfort, I would just say it's like a little prick. It doesn't hurt at all. Honestly, I'm just I'm not just saying it to say it. I think just the reaction, like my reactive skin makes it look like, oh my god, it's painful, but it's not. You have some breakouts here, hormonal, so I'm going to skip the chin. And as you can see right here on the top, my forehead, I have this box bar right here. So it's definitely gone down so much compared to what it used to look like maybe a year ago. But I like to, I like to mainly focus on here, and then I let you go over everything else. There we go. And now I just, you know... Just, you know, you have your frown lines here and just wrinkles on the forehead. Now, I will say on the forehead, it is a little bit of a discomfort just because you don't really have much fat on the forehead. So you will feel it a little bit more on the forehead. But it's, again, not painful, but you will feel little pricks a lot more on the forehead. And that's just because you don't have as much, like, compared to your cheeks, you don't have, like, much fat here. And there you go. You don't want to go over it. Whatever you did, that's it. Stop there. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the alcohol, the cup that it comes with, and just stick it back in here. You can flip it over, do whatever you like. I like to leave this in for two to five minutes, and even max, just to make sure it's sanitized for next time. So now this is definitely the next part. Of course, everybody's always asking about how to microneedle, how to use a banisher. I, you know, have no problem showing you. I've shown that to you guys a couple times, but sometimes, you know, you just want to see it in different angles, different lighting, completely get it. Um, the next part is I've always get questions on like, what's my skincare routine after microneedling with the banisher at home? So that's what I'm going to show you. Now I'm going to say it's very simple. You want to keep your skincare routine after you do your banisher, very simple. Also, just to make it clear, the banisher, I only use the banisher once a week and I only do it at night. The reason being I do it at night is because once you go to sleep, you give your skin enough time to kind of just like heal and like do its stuff and be okay by the next morning. So again, I only use the banisher once a week and at night only. So yeah, I just thought I'd mention that because that's also something that does get asked about and it's important. You don't want to use the banisher more than once a week. Just because you want to give your skin enough time to do its job of like, you know, to heal itself, to boost up the collagen production. Like, give it time. You don't want to just keep doing it every day. That's not going to work. That, if anything, that will cause more problems. Because again, microneedling is a, it's a puncture. It's creating a small little wound in the skin. So the skin will then react and try to heal and boost up the collagen production. So limit it to once a week. And then I, even before Banish gave me a coupon code and all that, I was already interested in the brand. I bought it myself. I've been using it myself because I did see videos about the Banish and I researched into it. So the products I am about to use are from Banish. But again, I was already using these products before they gave me a coupon code just to like make that clear with you guys. So again, I'm just going to show you what I use, but you can honestly use whatever you have at home that is fine, or if you like to use the products that I'm using, you can also use them. They're pretty inexpensive, they're not too bad. The pricing, I used to be stuck into thinking like you have to spend a lot of money to get really good skincare products, and that's not the case with everything. So yeah, what I like to use after I went ahead and microneed the skin, I go in with the Banish Oil. So here you have the Banish Oil. It is a vitamin C serum. It's pretty high concentrated. They make it fresh to order which is really cool about Banish. Of course, you can use any vitamin C product you have at home, either if it's inexpensive, expensive. If it works for you, use that. 
but this is definitely an oil I use after the banisher. Vitamin C is just really great while helping with your overall tone and texture of your skin, which for me personally, that's kind of why I use the banisher because of my acne scarring and just my overall skin texture. So I go in with this first. And it is a dropper. Now I'm not gonna do what you guys see on TikTok and Instagram, we're not doing that. And we're gonna put it onto the skin. Oh, I already got some dropping on the skin here. I just did two little light drops. And then lightly just go in circles, but going upwards, applying it on the skin. Also, the best way to know if your vitamin C product is fresh is if it looks like this, hold on. And a lot of times, most brands, they'll put that little bit of like an orange yellow coloring, not because that's what vitamin C looks like, but they usually do that so you don't know when your product has expired or lost its shelf life. So when you, when, your vitamin C product is pretty much over, it's like expired or it's done, you shouldn't use it anymore, is when it oxidizes to like this orange yellow shade. But because a lot of brands already have the product with that color, you never really know how much of a shelf life you have, how long you have for it to last. So Banisher will banish, definitely make sure that their vitamin C oil is clear so you know it's fresh. And just to let you know, obviously anything you put on after marketing will tingle a bit just because remember you did create these small little punctures, little wounds in the skin. So that's why it's important to keep your skincare routine after my microneedling pretty minimal. Like you can even just do a moisturizer and call it a day. But because I do want to kind of work on my texture and just my overall smooth of the skin, that's why I'm using like vitamin C. Vitamin C is great for the skin and it's not gonna do any harm. So should be fine but honestly make sure you do your research on products you're using that's important even with the banisher don't i mean if you feel like you need to do the extra research go ahead and do it because i did the same when i picked it up now one thing i just wanted to show it's not necessary but i've been using this so much now ever since i've gotten my hands on it and it's also from banish and it's their fighter gel this thing is great it has aloe vera in it and it has other great ingredients in it but pretty much what's really great about this product is if you have any crazy breakouts or any just like redness, major redness on the skin. It's really great at cooling inflammation and redness down and it helps with breakouts just like kind of by the next day, it kind of helps the healing process of an acne breakout. So I just wanted to mention that. I do have a few right here breakouts that I like to just take a little bit. So just take a little bit on the finger. Just apply it where I have the little breakouts. There you go. I can show you guys quickly what it looks like. That's what it looks like. It's like this really clear, cool looking jelly form. It has a really cooling sensation. It's supposed to just help with redness, any breakouts you have. That's why it's called a fire gel. And suppose this is really great for dry skin. And if you have eczema, this is also really supposed to be great for those skin types. But I specifically use it for breakouts. So this is seriously the last step. So in all honesty, I only use two products after going in with the banisher on my skin and it's really just vitamin C and moisturizer because that's what I'm going to show you next and that is this vitamin C, the vitamin C cream. So this is basically your moisturizer. It's from banisher. What I really like about it is a very thin consistency. It's very light. It's not super thick, but it does hydrate the skin pretty well so this is great for all skin types dry to oily skin this is great for you i've noticed that i never used to really like using moisturizers or i would use more mattifying moisturizers and i would produce so much more oil and be way more oily during the day but ever since i switched to using super hydrating moisturizers i've kind of combated that problem i've like balanced it a little bit so really like this moisturizer let me go ahead and show you guys what it looks like again it has a super light consistency it's airy but it hydrates the skin so well, which is why I enjoy this one a lot. I just take a little bit and kind of dot it on the skin. Make sure you also hydrate your nose because the nose gets overlooked sometimes. So you're gonna take clean hands and you're just gonna apply your moisturizer in upward motions. Pretty lightly, don't go too hard, you don't need to. Remember you need to treat your skin nicely. You don't want to tug at it or rub at it too hard. And if you feel like you need to go in with some more, you can. You can also take some on your neck. All right, so that is pretty much my skincare routine after I use the Banisher 2.0 Microneedling Stamp for at-home use. 
it's pretty simple my biggest thing is is just keep your skincare to a minimum if you don't even have vitamin c oil or cream that's fine stick to just moisturizing the skin after the banisher you don't really want to use anything that's irritating i wouldn't recommend using any products with fragrance in it just because fragrance can be an irritant in the skin all right guys just to quickly run down everything for the banisher 2.0 it is an at home my feeling is 0.5 millimeter needles that create little punctures little wounds in the skin to help create collagen production, elasticity, and just to repair the skin and help fade away acne scarring, texture, pores, and wrinkles. Also, I only use the I only recommend using the banisher once a week. I know online on the website it's a little confusing because some say every two weeks or once a week. But I did confirm with them and they said once a week is perfectly fine. Also, I recommend only using the manager at night because you don't want your skin to be exposed to sun. So kind of do it at night, sleep it through the night, and your skin should be good to go in the morning. Personally, I avoid wearing makeup the next day, but you can go back to wearing makeup. It's completely fine. And yeah, so that is it. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment them down below because I am open to answering questions. You can also message me or comment on my Instagram at the Henali. I'm always on Instagram a lot more than YouTube, like actively responding and looking at messages. So if you want to have, if you have a question like an urge one before purchasing the banisher or anything like that, message me or, or more, or more, if anything, comment on like my latest post and I'll get back to you on there. But yeah, guys, that is it. I hope this was helpful and yeah, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, because I do post new videos here every week and I will see you guys in the next video. All right. Bye, guys.